Hello and welcome. This is Kendra and I'm so glad you're here. Today I'm featuring the August of 2023 Crafty Courtyard Kit by Pink and Main called Let It Be and sharing how I made 10 cards with this adorable bee themed kit. Here's a brief look at what all is included in this kit. And these kits are one of the monthly subscription products available from Pink and Main. You can sign up to receive the kits each month and the base price is only $34.99 plus shipping, which is based on where you live. They usually ship around the 15th of the month. You can still purchase the kits through the end of the month unless it sells out. Now, Pink and Main offers several subscription products in addition to the Crafty Courtyard kit. They have a stamp set of the month, a stamp and die set of the month, and foil of the month. This is new and includes a new foilable kit, foilable card panels, and a roll of cheer foil. If you're a monthly subscriber to, to any of those subscription products, you'll always receive 15% off of all products in the store. So it's definitely worth it to sign up. If you'd like to subscribe, I will have a link down in the description box below. This is an affiliate link, which means if you make a purchase, I earn a small commission at no extra cost to you, and this helps to support my channel. Before we get started, I hope you'll take a moment to click on that subscribe button down below if you're not already a subscriber. When looking at the stamps and dies for this kit, I went back to my previous quarterly card challenges to find sketches that I thought would be good for this kit. I decided to go with 10 sketches from Kendra's card challenge number eight, and I've cut out the sketches here so I can see the measurements of all the pieces needed to make the cards. But here's a closer up look of each of the sketches that I'm using for these cards. And because I'm not using all of the sketches from challenge eight, I'm not really following the cutting guides for the six by six sheets of pattern paper that's included in the challenge eight printable. I'm just cutting the pieces that I need for the cards I selected. Now these are the patterns that I chose for my cards. So to keep everything straight, I've still labeled them. So here's paper A, C, D, E, and also F. So basically this, I've got five sheets here. Plus I'm pulling in additional sheets like this blue and white striped paper for the background piece for sketch 17 and also the honey drip pattern for sketch six and a few others that you don't see here because I didn't decide to use more pattern paper until I began cutting my layers. But I only used the cardstock that came in the kit plus a few extra sheets of black for card bases and a few extra sheets of white for my stamping. So for card one, I cut this plaid pattern that I labeled as paper A and I cut a four and a quarter inch square and another half inch by four inch strip for card two. And I set it aside and then I cut the next pattern, which is the colorful hexagons with the black and white stripes on the back. I cut a one by two and three quarter inch rectangle for card two and a two and three quarter inch square for card six. And then I set the remainder aside. Now for paper D with the B's and the green circles, I cut a four by five and a quarter inch panel. And then I did the same on a yellow hexagon pattern that I ended up pulling in after the fact because I liked how it matched and it works well with the two card sketches I'm using it with. But after cutting these two panels to the same size, I measured three quarters of an inch down from the top left corner and marked it with a pencil. And then on the right side, I measured down three and three quarters of an inch and I marked that. And along the bottom, I measured two and a half inches from the bottom left corner. I'm cutting these two panels at the same time so I can make sure they're the exact same size because I'll be swapping out the pieces to make two cards. From the top left corner, I'm lining up the three and three quarter inch mark along the cut line in my paper trimmer to make the first cut. And then I'm lining up the same top left corner with the two and a half inch mark along the bottom for the second cut. And I placed all of these pieces in my cellophane bag labeled nine and 10 for these two sketches. And then next I cut this blue circle pattern, which is paper E. And I'll be using the back side, which is a green hexagon pattern, along with the blue hexagon pattern for card sketches 13 and 14. So I made the first cut at five and a half inches, and then I turned it and I cut it at five inches. And the one inch strip, I just set it aside, but the half inch strip I cut off first. I trimmed down to measure five inches for card sketch 15. 
and then I cut one and three quarter inches off the large piece that's left. And this is also for sketch number 15. And by doing this, this will leave a three and three quarter inch by five inch panel. Next, I cut paper F, which is the blue hexagon pattern. I cut a one and three quarter inch strip off first, and then I turned it and I cut off half of an inch, and that's for card 17. And then I cut off one inch off of the side of this piece here, and that's going to be for my scrap pile. And then I cut half of an inch by a five inch piece for card 15. And this leaves another three and three quarter inch by five inch panel. So next I'm taking both of these panels, the green and the blue, and I'll be cutting these together after I measure and mark along the long edge. So I first marked at one and a half inches. And then from that mark, I mark two inches. And then I turned it and along the short edge, I measured one inch and then from that mark, one and a half inches. I'm cutting these at the same time also. So just like before for those for cards nine and 10, I'm lining up the top left corner, or I'm sorry, the corner with the first mark and that's on the long edge. And then I shift it slightly and then I line up the set that same corner with the next mark. And then I repeat these steps so that I have five triangle strips that look like sun rays. And again, these will be for cards 13 and 14. Next, I cut the honey drip paper so that I would have a four inch strip for card sketch number six. And then I cut a panel from the blue and white striped paper for the background of card 17. So next I cut and scored all of my card bases and then I cut my layers according to the measurements on the sketches. I did the rest of this off camera. Now for the stamped images, I've already placed all of the bees, the wreath, the honey pot, and all of the sentiments on the plate of my Misty stamping platform with a half sheet of white heavyweight cardstock so that I can stamp a bunch of images using the pink and main asphalt ink. Now I didn't use the hexagon shaped stamps here since I would want to stamp those in different colors obviously. And since the stamps are new, I used my hands to try to remove some of the stickiness from manufacturing. But after inking up the stamps, I applied pressure and repeated this process until I had a good crisp black image. And then after stamping the first panel, I didn't have to stamp multiple times. But I made three other half sheet panels of images off camera so that I could have plenty of bees and sentiments to work with. Next, I used my Copic markers in the colors you see here to color the images. The light blue B000 is really hard to read here, but most of these colors match the color palette of the kit really well. And then I colored all of the images. Even though you can use the stencil to color in the wreath, I went ahead and just colored it with my Copic markers since I had them out. And I didn't color the wings of the bees or the flowers on the wreath just yet. I waited until after I decided which card sketch I was going to use it on so that I could make sure that it matched the pattern paper. Now some of the bees wings were colored with the light blue color and others were left white depending on the colors in the pattern paper, but I did this for all four panels of images. Next, I placed the coordinating dies on top of the images using low tack purple tape and I ran it through my die cutting machine. Now I'll show you a trick that I like to use when mass producing and making a bunch of cards. So after removing the cut images from the dies the first time, I used this as a template, keeping the dies and the purple tape in the same place. And since all of these panels were stamped in the same place using my stamping platform, all I have to do is line it up behind this template and run it through the die cutting machine again. So I repeat this process until all of the images are cut out. 
Off camera, I went through each of the card sketches and decided what images and sentiments I wanted to use. So now I will share how I put the cards together. And just for your information, this video has been sped up six times. You'll see me using the Pink and Main Easy Squeeze Craft Glue and the foam tape roll to assemble the cards. For embellishment, I used either the flat sequins or the glitter enamel dots from the kit. And for each of the bees, I applied Pink and Main Touch of Gloss to the eyes and also on some of the wings to give it some shine. I also used circle punches and a hexagon punch from my stash for a few of the cards. To help keep some of the images level, I used Colal 3D glue gel, and you'll see that in a syringe when I use that later. But while I put the, together the rest of these cards, I'm gonna put on some music and join you back here in a bit.
here's a look at all of the cards again. I absolutely love how these turned out. The bee images are adorable, and I love the color palette in this kit. I'd love to know which card is your favorite down in the comment section. Let me know. Remember, you can continue ordering the Crafty Courtyard kit through the end of the month until they sell out. But with how adorable these bees are, I wouldn't wait to order. The kits begin shipping around the 15th, so head on over to Pink and Main website and subscribe using my link. I really hope you like my card ideas and I hope it in inspires you to get creative. If you enjoyed this video, I'd love it if you'd give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you're not already a subscriber. I appreciate you watching and I hope to see you again soon. Have a wonderful day.